Councilman Simaluka. Here. Councilman Camilleri. Here. Councilwoman D'Arminio. Here. Councilman Accomando. Here. Council President Mesa. Here. Please rise to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. myself from a uh, majority of this meeting. I have a conflict with, uh, I believe, two major issues that are going to be uh, brought up this evening. So my first order of, it, of um, business is going to ask for a motion for uh, council president. Motion for council president. Second. Second. Uh, uh, second. Councilman Samuel? Yes. Councilman Camilleri? Yes. Councilwoman D'Arminio? Yes. Councilman Alcomando? Yes. Council President Mesa? Yes. And the rules of this, I have some sitting on the other sheet, guys. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Adequate notice of this meeting has been sent to all council members on June 26, 2015, and to all legal newspapers in accordance with the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act. Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. The public is hereby advised that any statements made during the meeting of the Council of Council, the Township of Saddlebrook, may not be privileged or protected. And that persons or entities who take issue with such comments or are offended by saying may and have in the past sought legal redress through the courts. <coughs> any member of the public who addresses the Council speaks for themselves and not for the Council. Like a motion to open the meeting to the public. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Council President. Yes. Uh, before we open it up to the public, before we have residents come up to the, the podium, I'd like to read a, a statement. Sure. Thank you. Uh, this statement is in regard to uh, what I believe why we have a full room here. Uh, it's involving a recreation issue. So, uh, well, any further. Uh, this brief statement is about what happened from my perspective and the recreation director's perspective. Uh, we received a complaint back in March from the head coach of the Pee Wee Division of Recreation Football. Uh, the complaint was in regard, in regard to uh, him questioning why he was not selected to move up and be the head coach of the junior division. That was the essence of the complaint. Uh, the selection of coaches is the responsibility of the football commissioner. The rec director and I conducted an inquiry and met with the complainant. We heard his side of the story and ultimately we supported the decision of the commissioner. The complainant was notified of this decision by the rec director. After that, both the rec director and I received several complaints from four parents about various issues involving rec football, the program. We both attempted to address these complaints through emails, phone calls, personal Facebook messages, and individual conversations with these individuals. Uh, we had a meeting scheduled with the parents, with these parents, but had to cancel. We were waiting to hear back from the group with another date to meet, but the group came to the June Council meeting and said to voice their concerns, which was their prerogative to do and their right to do. Direct Director, Councilman Camilleri, and Councilman Accomando met with this group after that June Council meeting. Uh, I believe it was on June 23rd. I wasn't there. Okay, I'm sorry. Councilman Accomando was not there, I'm sorry. I believe we had a healthy discussion and suggestions on improving the football program. The rec director and I have also been trying to schedule meetings between the commissioner and the complainant. But unfortunately, the commissioner is involved in a serious accident and has been unavailable to meet. Even though we have attempted to resolve these problems, I believe we're at a point where the situation has become unmanageable. It's become personal for some individuals and there are hurt feelings. 
Our attempts to defuse the situation and reach a compromise have been unsuccessful, and it's not for our lack of pride. Director Usher and I support the football commissioner. He has volunteered his time and services to the football program for the last 18 years. And most parents that I talk to believe he's done a fantastic job. He has also been the commissioner of the wrestling program for several years and has received praise and accolades for his involvement there as well. The primary concern of the rec director and I is the kids, and it's always been the kids and the program. To not allow dissension and conflict to negatively impact the program. Our decision to back the commissioner is based solely on that and that alone. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> okay. Just due to the number of people in the room here tonight, uh, we do have an unlimited time limit to speak. Um, with all due respect to everyone in the room, I do want to hear all of you speak, but we're going to have to limit it tonight, let's say five minutes. And I think five minutes should be enough time for everybody to gather your thoughts and get them out there. So I just need a motion to... Motion. Yeah. Second. Okay, so tonight we're going to go over to five limit, five minute limit, and Pete, you got the clock. Um, the other issue is we're just going to speak once to get your, you know, your stuff together and come up and speak once. Thank you. Good evening. Omar Rodriguez, 235 Madison Avenue. Board Manager Council President, eight years of councilman. I want to first and foremost thank you for reconsidering resolution number 10. I came last month that we should make the lease with the Department of Transportation. So I, I see it on the resolution number 10. I think it's the best for the residents up there. Uh, Clark is here. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that's going to happen. Thank you. Uh, now if I move to uh, the next page, the massage earth. I kept on saying that the applicant should come here. Uh, he's based in the governing body. So the simple reason that this is open, we don't see them, but the hours of operation are not the best. Some of them open at 7 o'clock in the morning, they close at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, and we have location. I know it's a matter of enforcement, but if they come right here, um, they should be able to open uh, the flow for questions for the residents of the government body. I think that should be considered. Moving along, I would like uh, on resolution number 14, and just see a bill, a bill of payment of the bill to stop the engineering. Uh, uh, the reason I'm, I'm just mentioning this is because I'm just going to move along I'm just going to say uh, that there's two issues that we're right Last month I requested council not to the chair. Uh, last month I requested council to look up to explain or give us the date. Uh, to the next, when did he disclose his financial relationship with a prior township engineer? I'm wondering to the chair, the chancellor said, look at it able to give us a specific date on when did he disclose his financial relationship with the prior township engineer. The answer, Chair, if no questions or worry, I'll come back next month for the same question. Because I believe that it's important in the name of transparency. Uh, and those things, uh, I'm sure, I gotta give him the benefit of the doubt. He said that he disclosed us, he'd like to know the date. When did he disclose? Because my understanding is just he disclosed it under heavy chest questioning just at the end of the term of the former council engineer. Moving forward, <coughs> also the last month, me, Councilman Simuluka said that he did the right job, or he did the right thing. Uh, I totally disagree. Totally disagree with the fact that he just, again, talked about his financial relationship with the former council engineer. He just abstained from voting on his bill. That is not proper. He should have recused himself from any topic related to his former or to the former uh, township engineer, who, by the way, is his employer. Because you can't be vouching for your employer. It's a direct conflict of interest, as well said in the words of our uh, township uh, in, uh, attorney, Anthony Suarez. Councilman Sim Luca should recuse 
himself. Not just a saint, refused. But furthermore, after he was told that he continued vouching for his former employee, I believe his story is gone. Uh, that is the difference. Abstaining, you can hear the bias, but you abstain on certain items. Refusing is that completely, you gotta remove yourself from the bias or from any conversations inside or any close negotiation. Because it's your former employee, it's a conflict of interest. Um, uh, furthermore, I think that uh, we should look into this to the chair, uh, Mr. Attorney. I would like to know if the former council engineer disclosed his financial relationship with council of civil defense. So I would like you to look into that, if I may, to the chair. Finally, I'm closing, I would like to say, and I'm not gonna be negative, just move to move forward and bring the community forward and be proud of our community, we're not building a fashion hall. We can't pay the amount of money that has been presented to us for veterans here. So I'm here tonight to ask you to scratch off all the plans related to this Taj Mahal that's not going to work and we're not going to be able to pay. Scratch it off, hire a new engineer for the project. Let's start from scratch and I volunteer myself to bring people to the community to help us on build what needs to be built. An example, the snack stand, the bathrooms. Uh, by the way, I haven't even made an omelet. I just make, make uh, a comment to a few elected officials. Um, I already have the plan. Dominic Mason has been in town for more than 50 years in town, and he's willing to donate his services to this plan or to this project. And I'm sure that I will be able to bring the ele uh, uh, electrical contractors, carpenters, and whatever is not needed is on me. It is on me, because I know that I will get it. If not first from town, I'll get it from anywhere, and if not, I will be able to do it. Because all, uh, all the projects that we have down in town, our people, our volunteers, coaches, parents, have been able to donate their time and effort and heart into this town. So please consider just to make this project based on volunteers under the supervision of a professional engineer. Thank you all. Happy Fourth of July. Happy Independence Day. Thank you. Once again, good evening. Can you say your name and address, please? My name is Vinny.
five minutes is up. Robert Delenius, I live at 250 Chester Saddle. I'm here tonight to support football commissioner, who I've known probably for over 40 years. I'm a past football commissioner, and so involved still in the program. Um, when I learned about what was going on with Coach Rich, I was very upset. I'm very glad to hear that uh, Mayor White <coughs> the commissioner. Um, Rich has been involved for a long time as a volunteer, and he should be respected for the decisions he has to make. It's not an easy job. Um, I did it for 20 years. I've been coaching for 30 years since I got out of high school. And um, Rich has taken the position and done a wonderful job. I have to say, when, whenever anyone is Bob, uh, I just want to apologize. I know last uh, meeting I went through through my memory of all the rec directors, and uh, I think I left Bobby out. I think I may have also missed Joe Laurentino. So uh, my apologies and uh, my thanks for all your years of service.
there's a unique perspective that is different from most people. I find myself coming to tonight because I'm experiencing terrible deja vu. The feeling is getting very uncomfortable concerning the direction that some parents feel the recognition program needs to move them. Just a moment of history. My husband Robert and I have one daughter and one son. My son played in rec for nine years. My husband had been the football commissioner for a number of years and was coached for about 25 years when we found ourselves in a situation very similar to what's happening right now with poetry. I understand there is a passion that goes along with a love we feel for our children. And no one in this room would deny that any of us would do anything for the good of the kids. But looking back to 2009, there was a group of parents who had to run things. In hindsight, that decision that was made by the administration at that time was poor for the program as a whole. I have to ask, where are those parents now? Their passion in the moment made them do things, make promises, and say very hurtful things about my husband and my family. We were attacked. We chose to be silent, let the other people have their chance. But the test of time has proven that all of their promises did not come to pass. Did they have good intentions? Absolutely at the time. Google where the road to good intentions leads to. What many people do not understand is that if any coach runs things from a perspective of a power trip, ultimately they'll be unsuccessful. These volunteers are actually in a position of service, kindness, being humble. Most of the time, this job is thankless. Long hours, setting up, breaking down a field for practices and games. You fans, you only see 2020 on game day, so don't volunteer one moment during the week. The only rewards for these coaches, they're intangible. Can't tell you how many times someone has come back as an adult and had to reintroduce themselves to my husband because they don't recognize them. And they're successful, and they come back with thanks for all my husband's hard work. Our volunteers represent our community. They have the opportunity to teach life lessons of leadership, sportsmanship, and brotherhood. I would suggest to the people in the position of determining who is involved with the program to consider that it's best to look at the motives of those involved. If there is a direct benefit for their child, it is not for the benefit of the rest of the program. Because if history has taught us anything, they will turn the program on its ear and then walk away. That's what happened when my husband was ousted. And it has taken until Coach Rich to come back to set the ship back on course again. I don't know the people who are against Coach Rich. They are entitled to their opinion. But I want to remind everyone, just because someone has the nerve to complain to the mayor and council, which is their right, or come up to this microphone, or even if they take the cowardly move and post things on social media, it does not mean that what they say is true. <coughs> Ultimately, that's what brings me here tonight. I, pay, I have no stake any longer in football. My husband took a long time to develop that program, and dare I even say me by extension as his wife. We worked many years to develop it. However, it's a shame to see this come full circle again and watch volunteers who have stood the test of time and have know-how of how to run a program be railroaded, in unfairly insulted, and even wish physical harm, which I find personally disgusting. Coach Rich is a good and decent guy. He gives of himself to these boys more than the majority of people in this town, even to the detriment of his own family time. They are decent people, too, who care for our Falcon youth. Rich is doing a good job. He understands the young men and the game of football. And he is more, more than confident to represent this town in the league. I suppose he's very similar to my husband, Robert. He bleeds blue and gold. I hope and I thank you for offering your support for him because his character is impeccable. He's a state trooper. I trust him to protect the people of the state, and I certainly can trust him to take care of the welfare of our youth. Thank you.
Volunteer and Board of the Cross Commissioners has done so for the past three years. I thank you to the Mayor and the Recreation Director for continuing to let me do so. I'd like to begin by publicly thanking the Mayor, the Council, and the Recreation Director for helping in preparation for our third annual Board of the Cross Tournament this past June. Healthy and Salvo. We had over 58 teams from over 30 different townships and cities attend the event. The people of Saddlebrook were great, and several of the teams have asked about staying over next year. This is a positive experience for our township and youth, and I again want to thank everyone involved publicly for its success. Last council meeting, there was some frustration the date which our boys were to play on the turf field, uh, veterans field. It's important to understand that the field is under construction, Six months of the new role of the recreation department, things can get confusing. I have met with Mayor White since the last meeting and feel very comfortable that a scheduling system will be made and put in place for at least the fall to avoid these sorts of confusion. Last council meeting, there was discussion brought about a recreation director's position in 2015. Am I sending a letter of interest in advance of the new mayor's term? In the last meeting, there appeared to be confusion on who received the letter of interest, where it was received, and actually what was done with the receipt. Uh, one of the councilman's questions were, why didn't all the councils receive the letter? Valid question. In the fall meeting we had here in 2014 regarding uh, the turf field, its construction, I spoke in support of it as a recreation uh, commissioner, uh, the cross commissioner, and at that time I had met Mayor White, um, Mayor White White, running from there, and uh, Mr. Councilman Altamundo. And Mayor White and Mr. Altamundo spoke to me on their team's commitment to recreation, team meaning them and Mr. Yarminio. Mayor White sent to, said for, him, for me to send some information to him on myself and on my interest in potential opportunity. I sent a letter on November 14th to Mayor Councilman Altamundo and Councilwoman Yarminio. The mayor's defense did was sent to the collection headquarters, which he had explained to me things can get lost at some time. It was not sent to his residence. Council of Alcamundo, Council of Council of Mr. Yermenio, it was sent to the residence. And there are copies of the letters, and if anyone wants them for the council, we have to give them at the end of the meeting. I sent a letter to Mr. Yermenio in hopes that in one of her campaign um, um, slogans in her campaign, um, things that she wanted to accomplish was to create a better communication between taxpayers and elected officials. She admitted to receiving the letter. <coughs> what I'm asking is, what was done with it? After I received it? Yes. I, well, I received it. We talked about a rec director, um, but the mayor, that is the mayor's appointment. So after the meeting and after this was brought up last month, um, having you sent it right after the election, I right. believe, right? Um, okay, so I hadn't been sworn in yet. Um, the rec director position was brought up. I did have your resume, but it is the mayor's appointment. It has, we don't have any say in who becomes the rec director. You're absolutely right. I just want to intervene uh, a few minutes. Um, then I don't know if you want to go through your whole speech or you want to cut in because it is going to cut into your time. If you want to get all your points, if you want to get all your points out there, yeah. and then when you said and done, maybe we could respond then. And That's fine. Save you five minutes. That's fine. Thank you. Um, in, the, in the same question, um, Council Malcomundo, in your YouTube campaign production video in October, you made statements that you had a reputation of being very honest and a very stand-up guy. Very empathetic, which makes it virtually impossible to not be completely honest. In the last meeting, you commented on my letter of interest. You made statements that you spoke about me and about the position. You weren't comfortable with catering, you weren't comfortable with sponsorship. Can you elaborate in your empathetic and completely honest way on that comment? Absolutely. Do you want I have to comment, your letter. A comment now? Or do you want to go on with can. the first uh, question? Afterwards, because you had. You had and I do understand with respect to the mayor's position that it did to a point. Some of the things that become confusing is after that meeting, it was a rec commissioner just come up to me and said that Mr. Councilman Alcamundo had approached them about what they thought. He thought they thought of my candidacy as well, which leads me to believe that if Mayor White didn't receive any communication, two people 
Brunswick's definitely received it, and it's the mayor's decision. From what I met with the mayor, I'm not sure he ever knew I even applied or ever knew I even had interest, especially from his comments in the last meeting. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, thank you man. Okay. Uh, okay. Scott, 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 absolutely. In regards to the Gatorade and all that, I spoke to several people in this room that, are, in the room that, we had a conversation with myself, you, and Bill Grader, that if you become rec director, that there'll be sponsors, there'll be mats for wrestling, there'll be Gatorade for every sport, and I said that's great. But then, on speaking of it, other people would get the perception that me, as a councilman, was being bribed. I never said you bribed me, but I don't want the perception of the residents to be like, oh, he's going to get you a Gatorade and sponsorship, so that's why you made him rec director. And I have no say in who's a rec director. With, with that being said, I spoke to Bill about it, and I have spoke to you about it. Wait, this letter? This letter? When you received it. Yeah, you told me that face to face about the, the sponsorships. It's done in a letter. Disagree. I could probably get 10 people in this room to say that those words came out of your mouth and Bill Grader's mouth that you can get sponsorship and Gatorade for every sport. And I can't. And I didn't, and I didn't sign for this. Like I was was said I did I did receive it, like I said I received it, but I didn't sign for it. It wasn't sent registered. So I said you received it. So I said you signed for it. Okay, so you your were not here is up at the last you, meeting. In all due respect, you, you can't you can't go back. You spoke, you speak. You're yeah. just answering your question. Is is actually is Coach Grader still here? Because <coughs> we spoke on it and it I didn't just put this thought in my head about Gatorade or sponsorships. And one thing I don't do is lie. Is Ask anybody that knows me for 43 years I've been around. I do not lie. It creates problems. And I just have one thing to um, reiterate with this whole conversation. When you came up to the podium, you made it seem like the mayor or the council brought up the issue of you being the recreation commissioner. There was someone that represented you that came up to the podium. We won't just start talking about subjects unless they were Correct. presented at the podium. And I just wanted to make that clear. Thank you. Correct. Councilwoman Dorman Hill, do you want to do this? I'm good. You know, I did receive it. Um, I wasn't sworn in. Um, I should have acknowledged it, and I apologize for not, but I didn't know if that was what I should have d done, okay? Um, when the position came up, it is a mayor's appointment, so I let it go at that. So, uh, you know, if that's not, that's what I did. I, I think that's very well answered. Um, that is the mayor's appointment on recreation commission. It's been the mayor's appointment for years. It's going to remain the mayor's appointment. Anyone else like to speak? My name is Steve Fishner, uh, 368 Bell River Road. I'm here on the discussion for the Orchard Lane uh, issue or Orchard Place. Um, again, I, I was here last month and I've lived at Bell River Road for over 22 years. The, when I first moved in, it was a farm across the street from my house. I'm just going to reiterate just for my some people that have heard it. Um, years later, they decided to build. You know, this gentleman said that he was a little intimidated last month. I felt intimidated 17 years ago by the developer that basically pushed this addition on top of us by promising all these promises and um, did, obviously didn't deliver. He put five houses in his plot that was designed for three. He already brought that point up. He went through a long process back and forth. He applied for three or four different variances. One of which was, you know, the, the, the design of the street, the amount of houses. He brought up all these issues. There's going to be problems with parking. There's going to be issues with the 
cul-de-sac, there's going to be problems with the corners. And they said, no, no, we'll take care of it. It won't be a problem. It won't be an issue. And then, they, then the last thing the developer threw in was the coup de gras was, well, there's no parking on Saddle River Road. So if we pull the cul-de-sac, you'll have extra parking across the street from your house. So now basically what they're doing is, all I'm asking you to do is withhold the decision that your own city decided on when they approved the variances for putting this cul-de-sac in. I'm not asking you to do any more than what's already been done. Just uphold what decision you guys have already made. I mean, not necessarily the council, but a representative from this township that basically says, you guys built it, it's here, it stays the way it is. I'm sorry about the parking. Well, we're not, you know, they, they, they're having problems over there. It's not my problem. I've been here longer than they've been here. Like I said, I was here when it was a farm across the street. I wouldn't expect them five houses to be sold across the street. And <coughs> it is what it is. So what I'm asking you to do is I'm asking you to step up to the, the public, to step up to the business and say, you know what? We built it. It's stuck the way it is. You got to vote no that you're going to do any kind of specialized non-overnight parking or whatever. Thank you. Well, thank you, Steve.
And this, and if you saw the picture, you took a look at those pictures. Did you ever take a look at those pictures? You see how cluttered it is? It's a small cul-de-sac with very unique driveways where they get blocked by other, by other cars, especially when they're not there. By the way, this week we had, I don't know if you noticed, uh, see, I'm going to show you the sheet, but we had the Audi again back in the Audi 8 for two and a half days, sat there, just sat there in our block, in my neighbor's uh, 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 Hassan Bugard uh, driveway, right on top of his driveway, parked there for two days. He had to manipulate himself around it, okay? So we're not asking for a lot. We're asking for 12 o'clock at night till 8 o'clock in the morning. It's very, very simple. We have residents on Sadler Road that said they don't have a problem because they see we have a problem, okay? And we do have a problem. And I would bet that the, some of the tenants, because it's not owners that are parking it, and this gentleman that lives in the White House on Sadler Road, he's never parked. He's never had a problem, but he's got a problem that happened 20 years ago. That's 20 years ago, okay? We're dealing with what's going on today, okay? So let's deal with today, all right? So it's tenants. Uh, most always tend to three houses in a row that have residents, that have owners, I don't know if they're here tonight, but they have tenants that park and they just ignore it. They can wash their car, they change their oil on our street, but that we're also missing our, we're, our five homes are missing the services. And we want the services all the time. That's not too much to ask for. And this resident will, this resolution will allow that because when the cars come in at, during the night and early in the morning, the street will be clear. And we have to park in our driveways, we have to park in our garages, so we have to abide by it as well. Okay, so we're taking away from us. We're not getting anything extra. Okay, we're not. We're going to have to park, make sure we're always in, because we're not going to be in the street either. But I bet you we're going to get service 100% of the time. And I thank you again, Mayor. I thank you, Dean Provo. It's excellent. You know, the, the recommendation you made, I agree 100%. And it should be passed absolutely 100%. Thank you. Thank you. I would just like to comment on the smell. Um, if I may, um, we did just happen? put whatever you're comfortable, Bill. I mean, we just put more teeth into that snow ordinance. I mean, it, when there is a snow emergency in town, there should be no cars on the street. Right. I mean, that shouldn't even have any kind of effect because if the cars are there, they should be ticketed. There should right. be no cars in the street when there is snow. <clears throat> well, I made my share of phone calls over the last two months. Well, we did just put some more teeth into that ordinance. That's we, good. We That's good. It. But no parking when it snows at night, there's no parking, no cars, we get our street plowed. That's what we need to have all the time. All the time. Absolutely. I mean, okay, and the way that gets done is at night when there's no cars there. Okay, and that's just the way it is. You know, and we should have it. And again, we're not the only street. There's 40 plus streets in all right, this town. Your time is up, guys. All right, just thank you very much. 40 plus streets in this town. <coughs> we're not unique.
want to save the spot for their visitors, relatives, and everybody else. So they pay. Plus, you drive them in the car. And you have the house big enough to park four cars in the back. So it's just like a big job. Uh, as far as the field is concerned, uh, your question again, like I said, if just give me the number of what we were given for an estimate for the bathroom right now. Your question was saying, what was the number? Well, I couldn't actually watch the kids. Was there an estimate or Tom um, would like to comment on that? I believe Real quick, you're on this time. Or I wait a little bit. I want you to know. I believe the estimate was between 1.1 and 1.25 million. Okay, what are we doing? That was like the $400,000 sold that I just tried. The 400 engineer gave. I told you from the beginning the more money he spends, the more money he makes. This is what he did to us. Okay, that's not good. Also, as far as the punch list, has that guy Perry ever? I know he didn't make the walk the other night, but has anybody been in contact with him or has he showed up? No, the answer to that real quick is no. No, okay. So, therefore, I don't believe we should pay any bills that have to do with that bill. Until we are satisfied, we should not pay anybody. And you only have to do it to one person. You don't pay him, and the rest of them fall in line. If they're going to threaten to sue you, let them do it. Okay, they're the ones not showing up. Okay, not, not the ones taking care of the public. Now, I know also they post a bond. Does anybody know what uh, uh, an error in omission policy is? Any county people know that? Yeah. Malpractice. 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 Okay. Now, when we ask for green concrete, which is on the record, can what is it? Did you get green concrete? No. No. Should have we gotten green concrete? If you ask for something and specifically said, I want green concrete, and you didn't get it, would you, in your own personal house, would you pay for it? Pay the contractor? No. If we had a engineer or a project engineer there, would you see that the guy wasn't putting the concrete when they were pouring it? Absolutely. I saw it. So we didn't have it. We didn't have that coverage, but we were paying it. Okay? And these are all mistakes that we should not pay for. We did not, we got something that we didn't want or we didn't order. We wanted something different. Even as far as the uh, extra turf, the lower turf that was there. Nobody knows what happened with that. Did we get credit? How much turf did we buy? How many yards did we use? We don't know any of these answers. It was just a blank check, like I said in the beginning. We signed off on everything. Not to interrupt you, Larry, I don't want to use your time either, but. The, the turf has to go to Perry DPI. He has to answer those questions. Right, and he's and not showing up. So yeah. what does that tell you? When you were asking the engineer for month after month after month for plans, and he wasn't giving them to you, what does that mean? They're not coming. Is this guy coming? Doesn't look like he is. Like I told you, the whole end zone, uh, uh, Mr. Arcanando, you know that whole back end is all seen, right? Is it done correctly? Is it, no. would, you, would you accept it? Absolutely not. Uh, I don't I accept it. Right. Five is up. Five is up. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you. Anybody else wishing to come up and speak? Seeing none. Make a motion to close. Second. Second. Regarding uh, Veterans Field, I just want to clear up some confusion. Um, the turf warranty, that's been brought up. And uh, the turf manufacturer, Field Turf, uh, they did an inspection on a field back in May. And they, at that inspection, they did issue uh, their eight-year warranty. Um, during that inspection, uh, the steam and some of the irregularities, if you want to call it, were brought to their attention of the inspector. And that he had said that that would be checked out. They would try to make it look aesthetically better. But it does not void the warranty. The warranty is in effect. Uh, I also want to state that we have a retaining of 2% on 
until the final approval uh, and written release from the engineer. So we do have, we are holding back uh, funds. I'm also very pleased to announce uh, today uh, I, uh, myself, and Chief Kugler, along with um, two uh, background investigators, interviewed uh, three potential candidates uh, to be police officers. And uh, after these, these three candidates all uh, passed their backgrounds, passed uh, medically and, and uh, cleared, psychologically cleared, uh, what I can say, uh, <laughs> but I'm pleased to announce that we did offer them, uh, I offered them employment uh, as of, uh, these are all three residents of town, effective July the 13th. Uh, we'll have a formal ceremony uh, sometime that week so their families can come in. But uh, we hired Joseph Scrafani, um, Peter Romero, and Timothy Parisi. Uh, like I said, all three sound of presidents, and their effective date is July the 13th. Uh, regarding tax bills, uh, just quickly, uh, the state aid figures um, for both the state and the county budget have not been certified yet by the state. Uh, hopefully they will be uh, received shortly because unless we receive those, uh, tax bills cannot be calculated without that information. So there may be a delay in our tax bills. Flood committee meeting. We had uh, that meeting on June the 23rd, on Tuesday. It was a very productive meeting. Uh, we got suggestions and issues were raised about, you know, from the committee members about future improvements. Um, I want to thank Assemblyman Joe Lagana and Timothy Eustace for taking time uh, out of their busy schedules and taking part in our committee. Uh, they have provided help uh, and valuable information from the state. Uh, they are working very hard to pass legislation for flood victims and are huge proponents of raising the Marsalis Bridge in Garfield. Uh, this council, uh, Councilwoman Sarminio, had uh, uh, introduced a resolution back in May uh, supporting replacing the Marsalis Bridge which we believe, along with many others, that that would prevent debris and uh, from collecting under the bridge and thus uh, preventing the obstruction, uh, obstructed flow of the Saddle River. Uh, we had a coyote meeting on Monday, June the 29th, uh, this past Monday, that was very informative and well attended by the public. Uh, I want to thank all the residents who attended and uh, expressed their concerns. Uh, the residents, I believe, left the meeting with valuable information and a better understanding about coyotes. Uh, there were four speakers that each contributed some expert knowledge uh, to the discussion. Uh, I'm going to mention their names because they were they did volunteer the time, and again, they were they were very very helpful. Uh, Frank Vincente, uh, the founder of the Wild Dog Foundation, uh, he came all the way from uh, Long Island uh, here to help out. Deborah Yankow is the director of Bergen County. Department of Health Services, uh, Robert Harris is the supervising officer of the Burton County Animal Patrol, and a veterinarian, Dr. Mia Frezzo, is the founder of Hazard Type Animal Hospital. Uh, they were all there. And again, I want to personally thank them for volunteering their time and services to educate our residents. Uh, it was videotaped uh, for those residents who could not make it. Uh, it should soon be on uh, FCC TV, as well as the township websites and uh, the township Facebook page. Um, Moving forward, uh, I think with the help of these experts, we hope to monitor the activity of these coyotes a little bit better. And uh, we also are requesting uh, from the Bergen County Parks Department to post signs throughout the park uh, warning the public that the coyotes are there. Uh, lastly, I just want to say that uh, tomorrow we're having a concert in the 4th of July fireworks uh, from 7 to 10 p.m. at the Saddle River County Park. Uh, the band that's going to play there starting at 7 p.m. is the Willies. Um, popular band locally. They'll be playing from 7 to 9 p.m. The fireworks will start at 9.15. I want to thank the VFW for their generous donation. Um, we couldn't do it without them, as well as some others who donated to council projects and activities uh, for fun that we have. I'm just going to mention them. I hope I don't forget anybody, but Saddlebrook Diner, J.P. Patty Roofing, Spencer Savings, Columbia Bank, Walmart, uh, the Church of the Korean Martyrs. Those are the ones I have. And the and the massage the um, our studio the massage yeah studio two studio two oh five okay how can I forget that <laughs> that's all I have thanks.
Um, well, I just came back from out of town on Tuesday. Um, I did attend the meetings uh, for the flood um, committee via the cell phone. We did plan, I just wanted to add to what you had to say. The next meeting is September 16th. Um, I am in the process of putting a letter together to invite all of the government officials, the county exec, um, the assemblymen. Also, we're looking to invite the other towns, Lodi, Rochelle Park, Maywood, so we could get together. So that's just something that's coming up. Um, I also was going to say about the concert in the park, it is the Willies. A lot of people know Tony, Tony Servo and the Willies. Um, that will start at 7 o'clock, as the mayor said, tomorrow. And happy 4th of July. Most of what I have to say is that the, we're going to do old business and new business, correct? You want me to do everything together? Uh, I'll roll everything together. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone for comporting themselves with uh, dignity that I would expect in the people of Saddlebrook. Uh, it was unlike last month, so I, I appreciate you. Uh, uh, it was, everybody was very, very well spoken. Uh, so uh, I appreciate that. In terms of some things, I was uh, going to say I'm a little disappointed that once again the are not talking about the NEPTIV ordinance. In the campaign brochure, item number six was proposed anti neptiv rules. Hiring will be based on merit and suitability for a job only. No family, no political cronies, a fair and equal process designed to reduce possible future liability. I agree 1,000% on that. Um, and I just want to get this thing out there I don't know what the delay is. Um, not doesn't seem to be brain surgery. Um, do, can we expect it to be on on board on, in August? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll put on whatever you, know, you you want me to put on. Um, I don't. I didn't know that we had you know the final um, version. Well, you you have to do forth. the final version. I think I think we. Well, I mean the one that I had proposed, whether it's it's accepted or not was talking about department heads and division heads. Uh, I think that's the one that I had sent six weeks ago. I, I don't have any real changes to it. So if it's going to be voted on, it, it could be accepted by the council, it could be rejected by the council. But I think it's got to be, it's got to be done. Uh, where, you know, it's got to come to a vote at some point. Uh, second point, uh, the numbers that came in uh, were numbers on the veterans field, the concession stands, and the bathrooms. Way high, I mean ridiculously high. I saw them and uh, you know, not, not happy. Now those were guesstimates, estimates, by the architect. Uh, the only way you're going to see how much it really costs is to send it out to bid. Have somebody bid on it. It could come back $300,000 higher. It could come back $300,000 lower. Uh, but that's the only way that we're going to be able to uh, get it done and figure out what's going on uh, with this, because we may have to go back to the whole drawing board. You may have to pull out uh, some equipment, make everything smaller, you know, make everything bigger, whatever it is. But we really don't won't know a number. Everybody's guessing right now. We know what it's supposed to look like. We know what the alternates are. So you bid it, and there's alternative bids. The one's got the tile, the real fancy tile. One's got block. The difference is $100,000. It's a big difference. So put it out there, let's see what it is, and it's kind of like uh, you know, a menu, you know, one from column A, one from column B. Uh, Midland Avenue, I brought that up last month, I think uh, Rick was here last month, Tom, you were not here, and I said, let's get that going. Midland Avenue is supposed to be paved along with some of our other county roads. The only thing that's stopping it is that we have to, the town, has to install uh, handicap ramps. We pay for that. And then we get reimbursed once it's once it's done. According to Costa, it was like 98% done. Um, and what I said to Rick is 98% is not 100%. Just get it done. If you got to take it from them, you know, you you guys are the engineers. Tonight, which before most people came in, the recommendation was to have Costa finish that project, which again. 
kind of uh, conflicted out on that. But <coughs> one way or another, somebody's got to do it. So please, whatever it is, put your engineering heads together and just get it done because, again, uh, <coughs> it makes Dan Away look like a nice roadway. Uh, it's, it's horrible riding on that. Um, last month, we had something, uh, <coughs> somebody come in, a citizen, about senior housing. I did speak to John Bialy, who's the guy who's in charge of that project, and he said that they will be making a decision, in their words, the beginning of July. It's July 2nd, so uh, hopefully within two weeks, he feels that uh, it looks good for us, that we have all of the criteria for it, and as soon as they know, we will know, and then we can move forward uh, with that. Um, I think that's it. Just everyone enjoy a, a safe and happy Fourth of July, and uh, you know, be careful out there. I would just like to say to everybody too: have a happy and a safe Fourth of July. Come support our town. Our fireworks are good. Enjoy the concert. Um, it'll be a good time for all. I always like to um, talk about positive things. And yes, to all the speakers that did come up tonight to speak, thank you. You did speak very. Professional, your points were well taken. Um, it hit home with me, Bobby Delanius. Um, yeah, I was thrown into the ocean. I was made to walk the gangplank. And uh, I'll tell you one thing about Bobby. He is a man of character. Because he jumped right in there with me. And he kept me both grounded together. But you know what? We survived. And uh, the football program survived. And um, Rich McKay, he is a friend of mine. He always will be. And um, I will say this. He is a great man. I too would like to see uh, this anti-nepotism ordinance be discussed further and, and come up with the right version that we want to bring before this council to vote on. Uh, I think that there's there needs to be more discussion between us. Um, that, that's my opinion. Yeah, just I, to, to clarify the language. Mr. Chair, I, I just I, I don't know if the version that I had submitted the last time has been distributed to the council for their review. But you know, we have our work session August 4th. We could talk talk about it. It's, it's a matter of changing. It's a matter of changing a couple of words. It shouldn't take take long to get that done. But like I said, it's just to introduce it. If it passes, it passes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It, it may not get support. It may get overwhelming support. But you know, it's it'll be eight months um, into the year. And uh, I thought it would have been done already, but let's let's try and get it on track for for August. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Um, before I give the mic over again to um, Councilman Cavalier, I just would like to thank everyone for for their their, their dedication to our rec department, our township, and everything that you guys and girls and uh, women do. Um, it doesn't go unnoticed. And um, it takes a lot of time and dedication away from the families. And, and trust me, we know it up here that we can, ne can never please uh, anybody. But the one thing I know for sure is that everyone has the best interest of the children at heart. And so while we're speaking about volunteers, I, I want to give a shout out to uh, Mayor Schuster. They're there for, for everything. Anytime you really need them for the river cleanup. Um, they helped uh, Councilman Cavalier get into the kayak, um, <laughs> which I had to oar because he was tired. But, um, <laughs> but, but thank you. We have, we have a great township. We really do. And I'm so proud to be here. Uh, in addition to that, I get to say there's some fun stuff. Um, I just want to, uh, this article that was in the paper about one of our residents, um, actually Trisha Thomas. I want to give a shout out to her. And if you could just, um, just have a little patience, I just want to um, read this article because I think it's, it's, it's so heartwarming, heartwarming. And it's basically the caliber of our township. Um, for our, she was awarded uh, for outstanding dedication and commitment to service. Trisha is a business associate in the Valley, an associate in the Valley Hospital's Labor and Delivery Department. Coping with a fatal illness and knowing the end was near, friend Susan DeSilva was who worked in the Women's and Children's Services for more than 25 years, shared with Tricia 
Trisha that her diagnosis was serious. She told Trisha that her only regret was that she would never see her children enjoy Disney World. It became Trisha's mission to fulfill Sue's dream. She worked on every detail, from fundraising to travel arrangements, and even a full makeover for Sue. In less than two weeks, more than $9,000 was raised and more than 335 hours of vacation time was donated. A limousine took Sue and her family to and from the airport. Sue's last days were filled with love, family, and Disney magic. Although Sue passed away just two weeks after this magical trip, her last days were spent at the happiest place on earth, creating memories for her family that will cherish forever. Congratulations, Trisha, and thank you for going beyond, above and beyond, to fulfill the dream of a poet. I turn to you round of applause. I just wanted one more comment too, real quick. I kind of forgot. Um, over the weekend, our high school football team entered into a seven-on-seven -seven at Willie P. And um, I was there with a few other parents. We had a good time. It was raining all day. It was really cold. But our boys took second place out of 16 teams in the seven-on-seven -seven shootout. I am very proud of them. And these boys are almost emotionless. They're quiet, they just go out there, they do their thing. But boy, what a strong showing they had. And uh, I think their football season is going to be very exciting this year. That's all. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on to ordinances. The ordinance 1596 15, it's an ordinance amending Chapter 196 of the Township Code of the Township of Sourbrook that was tabled from the uh, June public meeting. This is regarding parking on Fort Link. Uh, order business is to untable the motion of the ordinance. Motion Second. Roll call. Councilman Simaluka? Yes. Councilman Camilleri? Yes. Councilwoman D'Arminio? Yes. Councilman Alcomando? Yes. Council President Mays has recruited herself. In order to amend Chapter 196 of the Township Code of the Township of Saddlebrook. Anyone from the public wishing to come up and speak on this matter? Motion taken to vote. Second. Seeing none. Motion to vote. Make a motion to vote. Second. What was that about? All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Be resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Saddlebrook that the ordinance entitled An Ordinance Amending Chapter 196 of the Township Code of the Township of Saddlebrook does now pass on second and final reading and that the Township Clerk be directed to advertise said ordinance or title of the of the press together with the notice of the date of passage of said ordinance according to law. Any motion? Motion. Councilman Samaluka? Uh, for the reasons I said before, I, I don't want to set a dangerous precedent. Um, I think that the reasons given um, about the safety and the, uh, the plowing and the garbage, they seem to have come, come up afterwards. Uh, I really feel for the people on Orchard Lane, uh, honestly, because it's, it's unique in that they crammed five houses with three houses. Should have been. Uh, but that there's no place within a couple. You have to really walk to get to another space. But that's the same problem for the people on side of the road, like I said before. Uh, as I drive down sometimes side of the road, I say, what, what happens if you have a party? Like if I have a party at my house, we have 20 parties. Where do these people, where do these people go? Uh, but in terms of snow, there shouldn't be anyone parking there during snow. And there's no guarantee that the snow is going to fall between 12 and 8. 
Uh, in terms of garbage, uh, you know, garbage can get picked up at any time. If the, if the garbage doesn't get picked up between 12 and 8, sometimes it does. But when I have to, they're at 6.30 in the morning, uh, waking me up. But uh, it doesn't always work that way. And same thing with street sweeping. I mean, they're not there before 8 o'clock. They're there afterwards. Uh, I just, uh, I just, I feel bad, but I will vote no. Councilman Camilleri. Um, I just feel that I don't want to open up Pandora's box on this issue. I feel almost in line with Councilman Semaluka on this. The snow shouldn't be an issue. Cars should not be on the street. You should, <coughs> you should get your street plowed. I have the same problem. A garbage truck comes down my street. He can't turn around. He backs in my street, picks up the garbage. Um, so with that being said, my vote is no, too. Councilwoman Dorminio. Um, after the meeting last month, um, I heard both sides. It was really difficult to make a decision, um, and that's why I had requested a recommendation from the police chief. Um, based on his recommendation, I would vote yes. Councilman Accomando. I respect the chief for sending a recommendation, but I'm not going to beat a dead horse. It's going to open up a can of worms. You do it on one street, you're going to have to do it on every street. So my vote is no. We have Ordinance 1597-15, an ordinance amending Chapter 174 of the Township Code of the Township of Saddlebrook, adding Section 10.18, which is uh, for road openings. As the engineer explained, we are working on the ordinance. And we ask that it be continued to the August 6th meeting. Todd. Councilman Simaluka. Yes. Councilman Camilleri. Yes. Councilwoman Diorminio. Yes. Councilman Alcomando. Yes. Council President Mesa. Yes. All items listed with an asterisk are considered routine and <coughs> non-controversial by the Township Council and will be approved by one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a council member or members so request it, in which case the item or items will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. The one motion signifies adoption of all resolutions, receiving final letters, correspondence, reports, and approval of minutes and applications. Now part of consent agenda would be resolution number 12, uh, payment of bills, Resolution number 13, to approve the proposal of major consulting. Resolution number 14, to approve payment of bills, cost and engineering. And resolution 15, uh, appointing Bruno Associates for a one-year contract as a grants person. Uh, also, uh, will be June 9th. Mm -hmm. And a June 9th, a special public meeting will be offered. Councilman Samaluka? Yes. Councilman Camilleri? Yes. Councilwoman Diorminio? Yes. Councilman Alcomando? Yes. Council President Mesa? Yes. We have the minutes of the June 9th, 2015 special public meeting. Have a motion? Motion. <coughs> Second. 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 Councilman Samaluka? Abstain. I was not there. Councilman Camilleri? Yes. Councilwoman Diorminio? Yes. Councilman Alcomando? Yes. Council President Mesa? Yes. Approve the payment of bills. I'll make the motion. Second. Which is the appropriate abstain or do I recuse? Because this is seven. Um, the, the money held in escrow for my project. Oh, okay. What? Well, yes, I would recuse myself on it. Yeah, it's a Thank you. 
Councilman Simaluka? Yes. Councilman Camilleri? Yes. Councilwoman Giorminio? Yes. Councilman Altamonte? Yes. Next is to uh, approve the proposal for Mazer Consulting, COA reports. Uh, just for the publishing knowledge, even though it sounds like my last name has nothing to do with my with me or any relative, it's actually from someone. So uh, I'm not number one. Spell differently. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably pronounced a little different too, but anyway. Could be. But I don't even know these people. Okay. Go ahead. With that motion. Yeah, motion. For number two for the motion. Motion. Second. Second. Roll call. Councilman Simaluka. Just so we're aware, or everyone's aware of what this is, uh, the Supreme Court came down with a decision with regard to uh, fair housing or uh, uh, low-income housing, formerly COA, uh, and we have to hire a uh, planner to give us advice on what our obligations would be. I think Anthony had, had advised that we've got to file a lawsuit, actually a declaratory judgment lawsuit, uh, against the state. Who's filing it against? Uh, yes, it's, it's a. No, but I guess it's against the state? Yes, I believe so. Against the state of New Jersey um, by a certain time, which is next week, in order to uh, hold them off for a bit. And uh, we, need, we need advice from this planner, so I am voting yes. Councilman Camilleri? Yes. Councilwoman Diorminio? Yes. Councilman Alcomando? Yes. Council President Mazur? Yes. Next is the resolution for a payment of bills, cost to engineering, a total of $75,534.90. Uh, just for the public's knowledge, um, we did pull two of uh, our engineers' bills here. Um, the total was a hunt for $113,034.90. We are actually just paying $75,534.90. We are taking out two of, of the, uh, the bills, one for $37,500, which is for a professional services professions field, and the other one for $33,000. <coughs> just taking down, taking out one for thirty-seven five for the professional service professions field. All the other uh, purchase orders here are for work that was done uh, uh, prior to that, or for different uh, projects throughout the town. <coughs> motion. Motion. Second. Roll call. Council <coughs> Councilman Samuelka. I'm going to abstain, and just in response to uh, Mr. Rodriguez. What he asked for before. I'm not going to go look through the minutes of meetings going back six years. If he'd like to do that, he's more than welcome. I've advised uh, him and everyone that I have abstained on CASA bills due to a professional relationship between the two of us uh, over the past six years. But uh, I'm not going to take the time to do that. He's more than welcome to go through the minutes, but I'm not going to. Councilman Camilleri? Yes. Councilwoman Diorminio? Yes. Councilman Alcomando? Yes. And Council President Mazur? Yes. And we have the um, appointment of Bruno Associates from Clifton as the uh, grants writer. Do you have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. Second. Roll call. Councilman Samaluka? Although I did vote against the budget based on the grant writing, uh, it's in there, it's part of the budget, and uh, Bruno Associates, I have uh, done my own little research, and uh, Bruno Associates will qualify, so I will vote yes. Councilman Camilleri? Yes. Councilwoman Diorminio? Yes. Councilman Arcomando? Yes. Uh, Council President Mazur? Yes. Mayor, anything to report? I just want to wish everybody a happy 4th of July and Independence Day. 
Motion closed. Motion closed. Second. Second. Aye. Happy Memorial Day, everyone. No. July 4th. Independence. July 4th.